Hi, my name is Irene Chen, and today I'll we'll be talking about the finite, finite difference method, which is a numerical solution that you can use to solve partial differential equations when analytical solutions cannot be used. So, we've seen in class that um, differ, uh, all kinds of diffusion problems can actually be solved analytically using separation of variables or perhaps an integral transform. In much more complicated cases, we often can't find an analytical solution, and instead we have to turn to numerical solutions to sort of approximate to some level of precision um, the solution we're looking for. So let's take, for instance, the diffusion equation. The standard diffusion equation states that alpha squared u sub x x equals u sub t. For our standard range of 0 is less than x is less than l, and then again t is between 0 and infinity. Our initial conditions are also u of 0 comma t equals p of t, and then u of l of t equals q of t, and then u of x comma 0 is f of x. So we can see that, um, as we learned in class, the problem can be readily solved if the sep by sep separation of variables if, um, let's say, p of t and q of t are both constants. But in the fact that they aren't constants, we don't have a known method to solve this analytically, and we have to turn to numerical solutions as well. The first step of solving this using a numerical solution is to go ahead and discretize the domain of the problem. So we know that we are concerned about x and we are concerned about t. Specifically, we can go ahead and split our um, grid, our domain, into a little grid uh, called a computational grid. And we are trying to find values at all of these points. Note that if we want some sort of level of accuracy, we can make these um, dots as far apart or as close together as we need, um, etc. All right, so this and so this will be delta x, and this is delta t, depending on how big, it's, how spaced apart these points are. The thing is, we already know the blue points because of our initial conditions and our boundary conditions, which give us um, the knowledge we need for the boundary. And then the idea of the uh, of the finite difference method is then to essentially propagate these values forward. So say like how does this affect it with this which affects this? How does how does these points affect these points which affects this point? So and so. So we to formalize this, um, we choose some delta x and we choose some delta t and we split our domain into these ranges and then we compute um, how each point relates to each other. So to do so we first turn to our basic ideas of um, derivatives. Uh, let's go let's take a step back and think about what u sub t is. So u sub t of x comma t, if we remember from our derivative days, um, is actually the limit as the um, oops, uh, the diff uh, delta t goes to zero of u of x comma t plus delta t minus u of x comma t over delta t. Um, and as if we choose t delta t small enough, we can actually get rid of this limit. So I'm going to go ahead and just cross it on out. Once we have, um, once we get rid of the limit, we are dealing with an approximation. So I'll go ahead and overwrite that. Similarly, we are dealing with um, u sub x x of x comma t um, is also just u sub x of x plus delta x oh, comma t minus u sub x of x comma t divided by x delta x. Um, similarly, we can approximate each of, oh, so we'll go ahead and say we're approximating this, and then we can approximate we can approximate each of the terms in the numerator by expanding those further. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the next slide. So we can approximate what we had in the previous slide um, by just expanding the, the terms in the numerator. So just use a different color this time. So u sub x, x 
of x comma t is then u of x plus delta x comma t minus u of x comma t all over delta t minus u of x comma t minus u of, oh, jeez, all right, u of x comma t minus u of x minus delta x over t. And that's over also over delta x, and the whole thing is over delta x. So what we've done is expand the terms of the numerator. And just to be clear, we're dealing with an approximation, not an equal sign. Once we've done that, um, we can consolidate the two steps up top. And we realize that we're dealing with um, u of x plus delta t comma t minus 2 times u of x comma t plus u of x minus delta t comma t oops divided by delta t del sorry delta x squared so now that we have this we can substitute this back into the equation we had previously and we want to introduce some new notation which I'll just write at the bottom so we're gonna go ahead and say that x equals x sub j um, x plus delta x is going to be x sub j plus 1 and then we're going to say that x um, minus delta x is going to equal x sub j minus 1. Similarly, we can introduce the same kind of notation for t. So we say that t equals t sub k, and then t plus delta t is going to be t sub k plus 1. And all this is going to do is discretize our steps. Instead of saying the deltas all the time, we can just say, oh, this is one step, two steps. And then how we define the number of steps is up to us. So rewriting what we have earlier, we can say, um, oops. So rewriting what we have earlier, we can actually say that, um, uh, just substitute what we had earlier. We have alpha squared. So we have u sub x, x. And then from what we have x, um, in the previous slide, we have u of xj plus 1, comma, t of k, minus 2, u of x sub j, comma, t sub k, plus u of xj minus 1, comma, t of k, all over delta x squared. And this is approximately equal, so up here we had alpha squared and what our approximation for u sub xx is. Um, I'll just write that up here. This is u sub x, x. I don't want you to confuse. And then our second, the term on the right side will just be u sub t, which we've already defined as u of x sub j, comma, t of k plus 1, minus u of x sub j, t of k, oops, t of k, all over delta t. And then if you remember, this is our u sub t term. So we have our equivalent that we defined in the initial um, system. If we rearrange this and we consolidate the notation, we actually realize that this all equal um, this all equals, and I'll just go back to black. We have alpha squared u sub j minus one comma k minus two. Oops, this is so ugly. All right, two times u of j comma k plus u of j plus one comma k over delta x squared equals u of j k plus 1 minus u sub j k over delta t. Um, this may seem similar to what we had earlier. Note instead that we are actually dealing with um, capital U's. I know it's not very clear with the pen, but we're using capital U's. Here we distinguish lowercase u and capital U as follows. So like if you, a lowercase u is the exact solution, whereas capital U is the exact solution of the differential equation. Um, so Capital lowercase u is the one we're seeking to find that's the solution, and then um, uppercase u is essentially the approximation to the difference equation that we um, signified here. Now that we have that, we can solve for our um, term in question, which is u of oh where is it u of j k plus one, and we can get we get that um, it's u oops that's a laser pointer. We get r u of j comma k plus one equals r u of j minus one k plus one minus two r u of j sub k plus r u j plus one comma k, where we've defined r as 
alpha squared delta t over delta x squared, just to abstract away um, the increment values. So given this, we could actually use this to propagate forward um, given our boundary conditions. So we can start out with um, our boundary conditions and use this identity which we just derived excuse me, to find um, the next the next possible steps and then given that we can also continue to propagate. So just to draw another picture, one last picture, um, if we think of the grid we had earlier and I'll just do a few, a lot fewer, one, two, three, one, two, three, um, and then we know one, two, three, one, two, three, we can, what the thing we've de decided earlier was that this determines this point, and so once we have that, we can color that in and it becomes blue. And then once we know this point, we can do these, one, two, three, and this becomes blue, um, etc. And then similarly, we can use, oops, that's the wrong color, you can use these to find this point, which also becomes blue. Um, and then now that we know these blue ones, they propagate forward again, all by the formula we described above. So that was the finite difference method. If you want to learn more about it, you can actually check out Greenberg, chapter 18, um, 18, which provides a much more in-depth look as, few as, far as, as well as some few examples. But this is the basic overall method um, because we've dealt so well, so much with analytical methods um, and we use MATLAB a little bit. We didn't explicitly explain what's going on. So I hope this helps. Um, happy studying for the exam.